as motivation for studying polynomials, we always try to draw parallels to the integers. So we have addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, and factoring. There's one more thing I can do with polynomials. That's trying to solve polynomial equations. So polynomial equation, what we do, we'll take some polynomial in x, set it equal to zero, and then try to find all x such that the equation is true. Our focus here will be on quadratic equations. Now, for a linear equation, equation of a line, we have y equals mx plus b, set that equal to zero. Here there are three things that can happen. If the slope of our line is non-zero, then we're gonna have a unique solution to this equation, which is gonna be our x-intercept. Okay, remember the x-intercept is where y is equal to zero. Okay, so for instance, if I had y equals minus x plus three, set that equal to zero, we solve, we get x equal to three. If the slope's zero, then I have two cases. So these are horizontal lines. If we're not looking at the x-axis, then there'll be no solution. If we had the x-axis, we would have infinitely many solutions. Now, when I have a quadratic equation, okay, the picture is gonna be a parabola. So there are three things that can happen here. We can have no solution, meaning our parabola never cuts the x-axis. We have a unique solution where it hits it exactly once. So for instance, if I take y equals x squared minus two x plus one, only solution to this being set equal to zero is x equal to one, and then no other points. So that means a unique intercept. Finally, we could have two solutions. So this would be where our parabola is partly above and partly below the x-axis. Okay, so for instance, if I had y equals x squared minus one, to get a zero here, I could put in either a one or a minus one, and then no others work. Now, we're not gonna focus on this, we're just focused on giving an equation like this, x squared plus bx plus c equals zero, how do we pull the numbers out of that if we can? So this is our first step to solving quadratic equations. Now, what motivates everything is the zero product rule. So the idea is, if I take two numbers, multiply them together, and I get zero, so if AB is equal to zero, only way that can happen is if one of those numbers was zero to start out with. Okay, so if you take two non-zero numbers, multiply them together, you get something that's non-zero. Now, our checklist for solving quadratic equations using what we call the zero product rule. We take our equation, no matter what form it's in, we expand all the terms, we push everything to the left-hand side. So I should have something in the form x squared plus bx plus c equals zero. If we can, we factor the left-hand side, Nope, a good first step there is to try to pull out a greatest common factor to simplify your work. If it factors, okay, we use the zero product rule. So if I have a product of factors equal to zero, then we're gonna check where each of those factors is equal to zero individually. We solve each of those, we get our solutions. Final step, because we have an equation to check in, we take each solution, check it in the original equation to make sure we haven't made any errors. First example, we want to find all solutions to the equation 4x squared minus 6x equals 2x minus 3. First step, we push everything to one side. So the 2x goes over as a minus 2x, minus 3 goes over as a plus 3. We simplify, we get 4x squared minus 8x plus 3 equals 0. That's in the form that we're looking for in step one. Step two, I factor the left-hand side. So first we know there's no greatest common factor to pull out. To factor this, we can use the AC method. So I have A is four, B is minus eight, C is three. A times C is 12, okay, we have A is positive. So the sign pattern is gonna be given by either plus plus or minus minus. I look at B and I get a minus eight, that's negative, so it'll be a minus minus. Now, trying to factor AC in a way such that if we take the terms, put minuses on them and add, we get that minus eight. So if I take one times 12, that won't work. Two times six, minus two minus six is minus eight. 
So this is how I split B in our quadratic. Now by that I mean, I rewrite it as 4x squared minus 2x minus 6x plus 3 equals 0. We apply grouping to the first two terms and the last two terms. I can pull a 2x out of the first two, which leaves me with a 2x minus 1. In the last pair, I'm going to pull out a minus 3. 6x goes to a 2x, the 3 goes to a minus 1. So just remember when I pull out a negative, that plus also becomes negative. Now the 2x minus 1's match, so grouping applies. We factor that out, and I'm left with a 2x minus 3. So we have the equation now. 2x minus 3 times 2x minus 1 is 0. We apply the zero product rule. So the only way I can multiply these two together to get 0 is if one of them was 0 originally. We separate out the factors. So I'm trying to solve the two equations, 2x minus 3 equals 0 and 2x minus 1 equals 0. So from the first one we get 3 halves, from the second one I get a half, and these are solutions. Now, we check, it's optional, but you should always check your work. For the 3 halves, I go back to the original equation. 3 halves squared is 9 over 4. We know when we work things out, we get 0 equal to 0, and that checks my work. Okay, our equation is satisfied. For 1 half, okay, 1 half squared is 1 fourth. We work this out, I get 1 minus 3 equals 1 minus 3, and again, the equation satisfied, so our work is checked. Now one note, this example is a little artificial, but it's just something to be aware of. If you're playing around with both sides of the equation, one thing you might note is, I could pull a 2x out of the left hand side, I get 2x times 2x minus 3, I have 2x minus 3 on the right hand side, and it looks like I should just cancel each of those to simplify the equation of 2x equal to 1. That gives me the only solution, x equal to a half, so the cancellation is going to throw away one of our solutions. So one thing to always note, you want to push everything to one side, have it equal to zero. You don't want to cancel things on both sides that match. You can wind up throwing away solutions. Next example, I want to find all solutions to the equation 2x cubed equals 18x. Note here, we can cancel a 2 on both sides with no penalty. But if we cancel x's, we'll throw away the solution x equals 0. Now, we push everything to one side. I get 2x cubed minus 18x is 0. So that's step 1. We try to factor. There's a greatest common factor here of 2x, so we pull that out. That leaves an x squared minus 9. We note that's one of our special cases. This is a difference of two squares. So I can write that as x squared minus 3 squared. And then that factors as x plus 3, x minus 3. So we factored our polynomial. We use the zero product rule. So I set each factor equal to zero and solve. We have 2x equals zero, x plus 3 is zero, x minus 3 is zero. That gives solutions 0, minus 3, and 3. Of course, we check our work. So we just take each solution, put it back in the original equation, and then we see that each of these checks out. Final example, let's find all solutions to the equation x cubed plus 5x squared minus 9x minus 45 equals 0. Now, this looks complicated. If I look for a greatest common factor, okay, it's, there is none, it's just 1, so there's nothing to pull out of the left hand side. One thing I do note, we have four terms. Four terms are what we need for grouping. So we could try that. It might not work, but if we try it, not a bad idea. Now, out of the first two terms, I could pull an x squared. That leaves an x plus 5. Out of the last pair, I could pull out a minus 9. That also leaves an x plus 5, so grouping will apply. So we pull out the x plus 5, and what's left over is x squared minus 9. Now, that's a difference of two squares. We saw that in the previous problem, so that'll factor as x plus 3, x minus 3. Our factorization is x plus 3, x minus 3, x plus 5. That's equal to 0. So now I can apply the zero product rule. Take each factor, set it equal to zero. That gives for solutions a minus three, a three, and a minus five. Now, to finish as usual, we check our work. So we take each of these solutions, 
put them in the original equation, and we know they will all work. 